The polls suggest here's the Prime Minister in waiting. Tonight we are live with Tony Abbott. Dumped once by his colleagues, does Kevin Rudd face the same fate from voters? And what I'd say to each and every one of you, I wouldn't sort of start rushing to conclusions. Uh, this is a pretty interesting election. And tensions in St. Petersburg, Russia and the US remain divided over a Syrian missile strike. From SBS, this is World News Australia. Good evening and welcome to the program. I'm Sarah Abo. And I'm Anton Enos. Also tonight, hundreds injured in a tangled mess of cars and trucks in Britain. And already a record number have voted in the biggest federal election yet. I'm pre-voting because I'm going away um, tomorrow for a wedding interstate, so I'm not going to be near a voting centre. Well, the campaigning is over and now it's up to the voters as election day looms tomorrow. The Prime Minister and opposition leader have ended five weeks of campaigning, both insisting it's still anyone's to win. Our chief political correspondent, Karen Middleton, joins us now from Canberra. Well, Sarah, the leaders may be insisting it's close, but the polls are saying something else as the voters prepare to deliver their verdict. The bodies dumped in an unmarked grave. Brian Thompson, World News Australia. You're watching World News Australia on SBS. Coming up next, standing defiant, a Muslim man sentenced for sending hate letters to the families of dead soldiers. Shortly, cheers to election eve. What's on the mind of voters at the pub tonight? And later, rebels on the road, bracing for a bikey invasion. The man who pleaded guilty to sending offensive letters to the families of soldiers killed in Afghanistan has escaped a prison sentence. Instead, a judge ordered Man Monis to perform community service. Why are you saying anything there? The man whose words to the families of fallen soldiers and a bombing victim landed him in court Other was attacks a attacks against its rule. David Herbert, World News Australia. Well, back with the election now, and Anton, it's been a grueling five weeks. It sure has, Sarah, for everyone involved. And, of course, our chief political correspondent, Karen Middleton, has been following every minute. She joins us once again. Karen, how would you characterise this campaign? Anton, it's been a very presidential campaign. Kevin Rudd guaranteed that. Difficult for the minor parties to get a lot of attention, the Greens included, but well, we've seen Clive Palmer... Um, the manage rebels to... are expected to stay in the West for about a week. Alan Rascal, World News Australia. Coming up next, Mike Tomolara is with Friday Night Sport and Olympic officials send a warning to future host bidders ahead of the 2020 Games decision. Also, the inspiring story of a skier preparing for the Winter Paralympics. Crown Limited Chairman James Packer has separated from his wife Erica Baxter. They were married in the French Riviera in 2007 and have three children. Mr Packer is Australia's third richest person and recently won a government licence to build a $1.5 billion casino resort in Sydney. Well, to the Australian share market now, which rose only slightly as investors wait for clarity over the Syrian crisis. The big miners were mixed, while the Commonwealth was the best of the big four banks. Wes Farmers Rose, its coal supermarket brand, is reportedly seeking a banking licence, which could allow it to take deposits from customers. In Japan, the Nikkei fell on the back of a strengthening yen. Shares on Wall Street rose on the back of positive US economic data. The Australian dollar is a touch weaker against the greenback and is mostly lower across the other major global currencies. And on the commodity markets, gold is down but oil is stronger. Well, joining us now, talking sport, is Mike Tomolaris and a warning from the International Olympic Committee. That's right, Anton. Uh, a senior IOC official says countries that discriminate against a specific groups should be stripped from hosting future Olympic Games. Russia continues to come under international pressure over its controversial anti-gay propaganda legislation. Jack Rogg has seen a few stouches in his 12 years as head of the International Olympic Committee. But the current row over Russia's anti-gay laws is one of them. 
Laurie Lawira, World News Australia. Yes, yeah, very talented in more ways than one, Sarah. Thank you very much, Mike. Well, coming up, the weather and take five, an irreverent look at how the leaders have emerged from the final week of the election campaign. Flooding in China has forced the closure of a major bridge in the northeast Heilongjiang province. Known as the First Eastern Bridge, it's the only link between Fuyuan City and Hashai Island, a border island between China and Russia. Well, to the forecast, a trough extending, extending from Western Australia to Southern Victoria is generating areas of patchy rain and the odd thunderstorm. A high is directing moist onshore winds into the Queensland coast. And there's a few showers in Western Tasmania. The says it's going to be an interesting election. And that's the world this Friday. Our next bulletin at the slightly later time of 10.36 on SBS One. And join us tomorrow night for a World News Australia election special at 9.30 Eastern Time on SBS One. Check your local guides for times elsewhere. Good night. Good night. I keep stressing a lot can go wrong.